Compared with the world of other animals, ours isn't a particularly smelly place. Or rather, it is, but we can't smell it. Not very well, because smell is really probably our weakest sense. On the other hand, it's very important to us nonetheless, because without smell, things would be pretty dull around about meal times. So how do we smell things? What actually goes on? To find out, you really have to look at two things. One is the skull, and the other is the brain. So let's look at the skull first. In fact, we've lost our snouts as animals. Ours is a pitiful little nose sitting there, and the bony parts are even further reduced. But even so, if you look inside that nose, you'll notice that there are some very interesting curly bones. And they have a lot to do with the way we smell things. Because if we were to turn that skull on one side, and if we could take a knife and split it down the middle and have a look at the inside of the nose cavity, we'd see this. When you breathe slowly, air comes in through the nostril, across, and down to the lungs. And it takes that straightforward path because it's coming in slowly. But when you sniff, it comes roaring in at a great rate and it hits those curly bones. And when it does, it's thrown into eddies, and they are wafted up to the top of the nose cavity. And what do they do there? Well, to see that, we'll have to take the top off the skull. Let's just do that before we go on. If you do that, that's where the brain sits in there, you find that the roof of that nose cavity up there, where the smell goes to, is in fact the floor of the brain cavity. And I can show you that by turning it round. So that's the roof of the nose cavity just in there. And if I shine a light up the nose, I think you'll see something quite interesting. In fact, there are little holes that go all the way through that skull, from the nose cavity up into the floor of the brain housing. It looks very vulnerable. It is. If you get the wrong sort of germs in your nose, they can get up in there, invade your brain, and you'll be very sick indeed. But mostly that doesn't happen. Mostly what gets up there is smell. And it gets up there because part of the brain is projecting down through those little holes into the nose cavity itself. Which part is it? Well, let's get a model of the brain. That would normally be sitting in the skull like that. So the part sitting on those little holes is really this. Notice how small it is? One on that side and one on that side. And that's the part of our brain that's really designed to receive smelly molecules or particles of, of gas. Very small. In a dog, that would be about the size of my thumb, so you can imagine how much smellier a dog's world is than our own. Well, how does uh, a smelly particle touch the brain off? Fire those nerves and uh, let us know that we've actually smelled something. We're not quite sure, but one theory is this. Let's say that's one of the little hairs that project down through the holes in the brain. We think it's got sockets on the end like that, and particles of gas, let's say you're cooking a, uh, a roast dinner, there are all sorts of smells in the air, there are all sorts of smelly gases in the air, vapours from the uh, vegetables and the meat. And we think that these have particular shapes, and if they can fit the socket on that bit of the brain, they fire it, and that tells us we've got a particular kind of smell, one associated with that particle shape. You notice that doesn't fit that socket, it won't fire it, and it won't fire that. You have different shapes, this one will fire that socket, but it won't fire any of the others. But sometimes you've got different gases or different particles, that one for example, which will fire the brain and give that particular smell, and a completely different chemical that has the same particle shape and size that can also fire the brain, giving the same smell. So that when you look at things like kerosene and uh, alcohol and ether, they have in some cases, similar smells, although they're very different substances. And incidentally, smells are awfully important when we eat that roast dinner, because we only have the taste of salt, sweet, sour and bitter, very really dull. When you eat a hot meal particularly, all the vapours, those particles, rise up the back of your mouth cavity into your nose cavity and you get all the smell of it. So for us, most of what we taste is really what we smell. Mm -hmm.